Good morning. In this video, I'm going to be launching some fireworks using smart contracts deployed on a decentralized blockchain network. Here's the plan. I want to write a Soroban smart contract, which includes a public function, which can fire a launch event. On a second laptop, I'm then going to run the Stellar SDK on Node.js. I'm going to listen out for that launch event. When it's received, I'm going to send a signal to an Arduino Nano chip. This is then going to light up an Arc Igniter, which will launch the firework. So we've got a big box of fireworks here. Inside, we've got rockets and all sorts. We can launch into the sky using smart contracts. So I'm using the Soroban SDK here. This is the blockchain network for Stellar. And then I'm creating this public function, which is called launch. This doesn't take any variables and it's firing an event, it's publishing an event, which is just passing in the topic of launch. So let's go ahead and build and deploy this. So cargo build target web assembly, and then we're going to use a Stellar client to deploy that. And there we go, we've got a new contract ID here. Now if we go into Stellar Expert, we can have a look at the interface, and it's got this simple launch function. We can call that function from the command line using Stellar contract invoke. Let's try that now. If we scroll up, we can see that the insuccessful contract call equals true, which means that's gone through. Let's have a look at the controller that we're going to use to monitor this event. So we'll be working in Node.js here, and we'll be using a robotics module called Johnny5, which is to connect to the Arduino. What that allows us to do, if we go into the Arduino IDE, we can use one of the examples from Fermata, Fermata Plus. We can then compile this and push it out at the runtime to the Arduino chip, and that will allow us to control it from within Node.js. Also within Node.js, we've got the Stellar SDK, so we can use that to monitor events. So I'm going to pass in a new contract address here, and then if we scroll down, we've connected into the board, and then once it's ready, we're going to run this loop. So while this power boolean is set to false, we're going to check the events and then we're going to wait three seconds just to avoid any rate capping. If that power switch is turned on, we're going to turn it on for roughly five seconds. That's going to send power to the Arc Igniter for five seconds and it will light up. Once that's over, it will set to false again, it will run the loop, so it will wait for another event to be fired. Because we're pulling the events, we need to do a little bit of work within storing it to make sure it's, if it's already been seen. So we don't want to fire an event for past events. We want to fire events once this application is running any new events that are seen. You know, we want to fire it once per event. So we're storing the event ID into an array and checking if that is um, included already. And if not, we're going to console log this launch and then put power to true, which will run this block of code, open up the relay and send power to the Arc Igniter for five seconds. Unfortunately, the first attempt to build an Arc Igniter didn't work, but managed to get some off Amazon, and now we've got this set up. So we've got a laptop running Node.js and that controller we just looked at, and then that's connected via USB cable to Arduino Nano. The Arduino Nano is sending a signal to a 5 volt relay. The relay is opening and closing a switch, which is connected to a 3 amp 5 volt transformer, and then that's sending power to the Arc Igniter. The Arc Igniter is converting that to extremely high voltages, about 40,000 kilovolts, and that's creating that arc, which I'm hoping will be enough to light that firework. The British celebrate the 5th of November because of a failed plot dating back to 1605. A man called Guy Fawkes tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament and was caught with loads of gunpowder underneath in the subways. Given the current state of politics, I think we'd celebrate more if it had been successful, but regardless, we send up fireworks on the 5th of November. So all we have to do now is wait until it's dark. Okay, big moment, here goes. Relays fired. <laughs> Let's do another one. Well, this has been a bit of self-indulgence in fun and mischief. There's an important point to make here too. 
it showcases how web free developers can connect to Internet of Things devices from anywhere in the world without using AWS cloud services. Everything's stored within a smart contract hosted on a decentralized peer to peer network. The potential for web free to catch up and overtake cloud services is very important and it has the potential to disrupt how developers think about deploying their code. Do you really want to set up a backend with microservices and servers? Or do you want to store your data and business logic within a smart contract, push it out there and just be done? As the web free developer experience improves, that's become a very viable option for all developers. And that's the potential disruptive nature of this technology. Hope you've enjoyed the video, subscribe for updates, and thank you for watching.